Yeah, that was our attempt at an intro. Hello, interwebs, and welcome to Close Up. I'm your co-host, Joe. I'm Ryan Walker. And today, we're going to discuss the Marvel Cinematic Universe's multiverse, past, present, and future. I'd like to start off by warning you, we're about to spoil everything about the WandaVision, Loki, and What If Disney Plus shows, Spider-Man No Way Home, and everything from the Multiverse of Madness trailers, plus some speculation on Doctor Strange 2. So beginning with an extreme long shot, a brief history of our Marvel fandoms is in order. So you know where we're coming from with this stuff. Ryan, you want to start? Yeah, so I remember growing up with the... Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. I think it was the first movie I saw in theaters ever. Oh. That I can't remember. Probably besides, like, I don't know, maybe The Grinch. Who knows? Watch that. Watch the Iron Man movies growing up. I remember going to see The Avengers, and that was a huge moment, which is almost 10 years old, which is... It's insane to think about how much time has passed. But yeah, um, wasn't really into the comic books as a kid, but throughout the MCU, I've really had a respect for the universe and superheroes as a whole, especially more, I was always more into DC, but ever since these movies come out, it's helped me expand my knowledge on the different Marvel superheroes and their uh, universe. Yeah, it's crazy how similar our backgrounds are there, because a lot of what you said is what I was going to say. I grew up a DC kid as well, but I was always aware of Marvel. The Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire Spider-Mans, like you said, they were a massive part of my childhood too, and formed part of my foundational love for superhero media. I also liked the old X-Men movies, and was mildly entertained by the other stuff. People love to forget the days of Marvel films like Ang Lee's Hulk or Ghost Rider with Nicolas Cage or Ben Affleck as Daredevil. Classic. Yep. Jennifer Garner as Elektra, the old Fantastic Four. Iconic. Iconic. (laughs) They even brought back Chris Evans they liked it so much. (laughs) Oh yeah, I also watched uh, old reruns of the 60s. Spider-Man cartoon, and the 70s Hulk show with Lou Ferrigno, that was the Marvel stuff I grew up with. So when Iron Man came out in 2008, my only real experience with the character was probably from Marvel's Ultimate Alliance games. I don't know if you remember those. Yes. I never played as Iron Man in those games, but that was probably my first introduction to him. I also thought Captain America was super lame before the first Avenger, which first Avenger is actually my favorite Marvel film to this day, for the record. So it really turned my opinion around on that. And since the MCU, I've come to appreciate the greater Marvel Universe more, both in film and in source material. So that's the background on that. So... I forgot to mention there's a a great... Spider-Man TV show that got canceled because of the spectacular spectacular Spider-Man yeah on if you haven't seen it it's on Netflix in Canada right now you can watch the whole thing it is so good the whoever I can't remember the guy's name but whoever plays Spider-Man and Peter Parker it's it's brilliant do yourself a favor you'll be so sad that this show got canceled it's so good also first Avenger probably my least favorite Captain America film that's okay really we have different opinions that's what a podcast is for i think the russo movies are overrated i said it i said it the first avenger is the best one disagree end podcast (laughs) we will get into that debate another day thanks for giving me an episode idea oh i'm uh, i'm all here for it yep Russo's are overrated. First one was the best. Okay, so we're in our medium shot now. And here, I want to give our viewers slash listeners a chance to get caught up to speed on Marvel's multiverse as it stands and what it is. So, Ryan, do you want to take a stab at explaining what the multiverse is? So basically, in simple terms... The MCU had their own universe where everything, all of it was canon and all that stuff. What the multiverse is, it's 
different parts of the universe, uh, different universes that that branch off into different realities. So it was expanded on in the Loki show how Loki, how when the Avengers went back in time and Loki got the Tesseract, yeah, Tesseract by accident. That is technically a different universe now. It's a whole different reality. That's when the TVA showed up, took them back to their HQ, and then there's that whole mess. And then there's the Lady Loki. Um, I can't remember her name. Was it Sylvie? Sylvie. Sylvie. And there's, there's all that. And then there's different implications throughout all the TV shows that are trying to explain the multiverse. There's, um, I don't think Wanda's vision really touches on it that much. I think it does, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Maybe like a little bit? Just a little bit. There was, actually, I'll just say it now. There was a tease at the very end of WandaVision. I know some people theorized that, do you remember when she heard her kids and she was in that cabin? Yes. She heard her kids. A lot of people theorized at the time that she was hearing her kids from the multiverse tuning into this magic and that why people think she'll be in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Maybe her whole motivation is to look for her kids in the multiverse, or it would make sense that that's why she's there. Mm Mm-hmm. That theory does make some sense, but you were saying. But yeah, and not a lot of people would watch the Disney Plus shows, and I understand why. You know, you gotta pay for it or even do... Hey, you could do it now. Free trial... For I think it's a month or even 14 weeks. Hash them all out. I don't care what you're doing. Take time off work. Say you got COVID. Watch them all. And then you'll understand. That's my advice. But if you need money, stay at work. Or how about you don't watch them all. You just watch the good ones. WandaVision and Hawkeye. And uh, Loki's optional. Don't bother with Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Loki. Well, to be fair, you don't need Falcon and Winter Soldier to understand multiverse. (laughs) It's bad. Really didn't like that show. To be fair, I think there were some good parts in that show, but it is one of the weaker ones. Anyway. Look, look, I'm a defender of things in general. I don't ever think there is anything I've seen that doesn't have some good in it. But it's a bad show on the whole. I do not like that one. Fair enough. Just to sum up all that, Loki cracked open the multiverse. No Way Home and What If explored some of its alternate branches, and the new Doctor Strange movie is set to blow the concept wide open. And with that, we're in a close-up on the topic. So here we're going to break down how the multiverse came to be in Marvel a little more in depth, starting with, well, like we were saying, WandaVision roughly teased it, but the multiverse in the MCU really got going in Loki. So, we can talk about Loki now, maybe, and talk about how it established the multiverse's rules and our brief reviews on the show. Let's just, let's talk about Loki for a bit. Yeah, so Loki was, talk about in terms of wrong place, wrong time. You know, he just thought, this is his regular universe, he's just going to take the Tesseract. No, no, no. He goes to this the TVA, which is the Time Variance Authority. Authority. I almost said Association. Time Variance Authority, where basically this entire organization keeps the prime MCU universe intact. Whole lot of shenanigans happen throughout the show. Meet Sylvie, who is a variant, so a time variant of Loki. So Lady basically. Loki. Basically the same person. She's a great character. More and more stuff happens. I think it's a good show. There's a lot of... You know, there's the Time Lords or whatever who turn out to be... Spoiler. Turn out to be robots. They're not real. Yep. And basically... They go to the end boss who is Jonathan Majors. Am I saying that right? The actor's I... name? I... I think that's who that is. I never got into it enough to look up his name, but I, mm. I'll, he's Kang. I'll, he's Kang. I'll take your word as I think his name was, he's Kang. I don't remember the actor's name. Yeah. I'm sorry. He is Kang the Conqueror. It's been confirmed for even before the show, I'm pretty sure. And I think 
Oh, no, okay, I remember. He was cast in Ant-Man. Yes. Nobody knew he was going to show up for the first time in Loki, was yes. what happened there. So, basically, Loki and Lady Loki, they go to talk to him. This guy's at the center of controlling the universe, keeping on one timeline. And the reason it gets all messed up is because Sylvie kills this version of Kane because backstory stuff. He messed up her timeline, stopped her from having uh, adulthood, or, and was just on um, I th- was just on the run for her whole life. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and so- she was. Well, his whole thing is he he decided to branch the timelines be- because alternate versions of Kang the Conqueror would be, I guess, destiny to rise up and throw the multiverse into a chaos war. And this version of Kang decided that the only way to save the multiverse was by making sure the multiverse stayed in check. So he formed the TVA to prune all the alternate timelines, of which Sylvie's was a casualty. But she managed to be a survivor of that timeline. And set about as a a multiversal rebel, basically trying to... I don't even remember what she was trying to do, to be honest. But she she was doing something. She was just upset. The timelines had to be destroyed. The multiverse couldn't exist. Yeah, it was something... I can't remember. I'd have to go back and watch it. But I think it was something because she was taken away from her home or something like that. And she and her wanted, whole timeline was wiped out. Yeah, she wanted to kill the person who was responsible for it. Loki tried to stop her. Didn't work out. And so as soon as he killed her, no, sorry, as soon as Sylvie killed Kang, Kang, you see a bunch of multiverse threads branch off. It's all out of order. And then Loki goes back to the TVA, gets sent back, and he realizes that he is now in a different timeline because Morbius, who is played brilliantly by Owen Wilson. Best character in the show. Best character doesn't recognize him or thinks he's a different version thinks he's been working with him for a long time it's like what do you mean like he's confused and then the main statue where he first saw the three time lords it is now Cain the conqueror so loki prophecy is... came to pass the conqueror is here and the multiverse is in trouble q mm-hmm. marvel phase four q loki season two that too however He's not the only one who's been messing up the multiverse. Yep. A young lad from Queens is responsible. <laughs> Just because he wanted his friends to get into college. Hm. I mean, I'd do the same, to be honest, you know. Okay. But I probably would have sent a letter first. Like Doctor Strange <laughs> said, you didn't even call them? Well, when you put it like that. The funny thing about No Way Home to me, I was... I was annoyed with it going in, just because I think I told you before about the famous Spider-Man story, One More Day, or One Day Mm -hmm. More, or whatever it was called. I could not believe my ears when I saw they were adapting that story. Are you freaking serious now here, Marvel? You're adapting the most reviled Spider-Man story of all time? Which, if you don't know, the story basically involves... I think what happened was the devil, (laughs) the Green Goblin or somebody killed Aunt May or she was dying of old age or something happened. And then Spider-Man makes a deal with the devil to give up his marriage to Mary Jane and to, oh yeah, and also to get his secret identity restored because in the Civil War comic book, Spider-Man revealed his identity Mm. to the world. Oh no, that's what happened. So he revealed his identity to the world and I think that got his enemies to come attack Aunt May and because it was his fault. So basically he sold his marriage to the devil and got his secret identity back just to save a 90-year-old lady. Fair trade. (laughs) A lot of Spider-Man fans thought that was so dumb because... I'm sure we'll talk about this at length another time, but a huge problem Spider-Man fans have is that Marvel won't ever let the poor boy grow up. Spider-Man was married, he was doing okay, but nope, they gotta reboot him, send him back to high school. 
he's always in high school or in the Spider-Verse 40. They never let him grow up, so one more day was a just a slap in the face to anyone who wanted to see actual character growth for Spider-Man. And I could not believe they were adapting that, like I've said multiple times at this point. They just... Yeah, okay, he was gonna make it so nobody knew who he was anymore, and... So yeah, that's what he did. He made sure everyone knew he wasn't there anymore, and he sold his relationship to Mary Jane. Somehow they made one more day work. I don't know. Somehow. They made the worst Spider-Man story into the biggest movie of last year. Well, you want to know how they avoided it? By avoiding the the worst part of the comic, was don't have the devil in there. Yeah, they killed Aunt May, too. Oh, they did everything. What a, what a... They adapted the whole story, just took out the devil. What a sad scene. It made me tear up for sure. Should we say our reviews of Spider-Man before we go more into the multiverse, just real quick? Or... Yeah, yeah. I didn't give my review of Loki, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna bounce back. Okay. I did not like Loki as much as most people. It seems to be a controversial opinion of mine, but I thought Loki had a great beginning. Pretty great last episode, but episodes 3, 4, and 5 didn't do it for me. Because I think my main thing was we were talking about how great Owen Wilson was in the show. And when they split up Loki and Morbius, that romance to me was the core of the show. When they split up, I just did not care about Loki and Sylvie's relationship or what Sylvie was doing. They tried to make me care, but I just didn't. I cared about Loki and Morbius. And when the show veered off that direction, it just wasn't the same. That's fair. It wasn't bad by any means, but it just it didn't keep me invested for the middle chunk of it. I feel like they could have made it two episodes shorter, at least, and not really lost much. That's fair. I would have to go back and rewatch the whole season again just to yeah. do a refresher. But I thought it was pretty good. I think it's, I want to say it's not, it's not my favorite uh, out of the Disney Plus shows, but it's up there just. Like I said, great start, great ending, weak mm. middle. I just, I can't laud it the same way I laud WandaVision or even Hawkeye, both of which I loved for the record, just because as much as I liked in it, the middle was just, yeah. That's fair. That's with a lot of TV shows, too, where you're trying to figure out what you do in the middle of it because you have such a strong yep. start and a strong ending. And that's the problem with doing a miniseries, is that a miniseries needs to be... See, the thing about a movie structure is that you tell your two- to three-hour story, get in, get out, that's it. A TV show, you have 10 to 13 to... 24 hours to tell a whole story over the course of a season, but also have these little bite-sized hour-long adventures in there too, which people like to call filler nowadays, but that's sort of the whole structure of TV. I don't... I hate when people say, throw the word filler around, because that's... usually they're missing the point. But Loki did sort of feel like filler to me. That whole episode, they're just on the planet together. Loki and Sylvie, I feel like that could have been done more efficiently in another story. But the, but the character development, Joe, their relationship building, so they can smooch at the end and then break up. Well, yeah, it's like I was saying, though, <laughs> the character development is fine. I don't mind character development, but the whole episode is just them kind of hanging around on this planet, talking to each other without anything happening. It does take, now that you remind me, it does take a while for that planet to blow up. Yeah, it took the whole episode. (laughs) If they had that same episode in maybe episode four or something, if they got that character building relationship while other stuff was happening, well, that's fine. It's just that they took a whole episode to build this character relationship and nothing else happened in it. And that's my least favorite episode of it. That's my problem with Loki. Like I said, I hate when people throw around filler. I feel like middle bits were filler in that show. That's fair. The story they had for Loki wasn't enough to fill a six-episode miniseries. Same thing with the book of Boba Fett we were complaining about the other week. It didn't need to be a seven-hour show. The story did Mm. not fit that time length. 
Yeah, for sure. Let's go on the No Way Home unless you yeah, have more to say have about to. Loki. No, I think we covered it a lot. I want to rave about something. I don't like to complain. Yes. So with No Way Home, I think we all knew that the other two Spider-Man were in it. I think we all knew it. I was completely shocked. I had no idea. There were there were leaks. There were interviews where people analyzed the crap out of it. And the way they made it all work in terms of multiverse rules, are there some flaws? Yeah, but no one's perfect. Yeah. But how, so basically in No Way Home, Peter Parker, his identity was revealed by Mysterio in the last movie, goes to Doctor Strange and says, hey, can you make it so no one remembers who I am? Or no one remembers who, it would have been better if he said, hey, can you make it so no one remember who Mysterio was? That would have been better. I saw that meme where it was like, look, it's a great joke, but don't say that. Otherwise, we don't get this movie. We don't get a, we don't get a great movie. So he asked, hey, can you make everyone forget that I'm Spider-Man? So Doctor Strange goes to do the spell. <clears throat> Excuse me. But Peter keeps messing up the spell. He's like, hey, can you, can you make it so that MJ remembers and Ned remembers and then Aunt May and then Happy for some reason? He's like a weird uncle figure. Um, and then the spell gets messed up. And then, so Stephen Strange, he doesn't do the spell at first. Because he has to contain it because it was going to break the multiverse. Well, as he was breaking the multiverse, a bunch of people from other Spider-Man universes were coming in, such as Doc Ock from Sam Raimi's universe, Green Goblin. Lizard, my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's. The Lizard from Amazing Spider-Man. Electro. Uh, Electro, who is a lot better in this movie. Yep. Sandman from the Raimi universe, and... and don't forget the sixth of the Sinister Six, Venom himself, who was hanging out at the bar and didn't show up. And the, the glue... post credit scene. We'll talk about that later, and how it's so stupid. They should have just kept him. And then... So he goes, just a quick recap. He, like, he, he thinks he can... Without, saves everybody. He thinks he can save everybody because... they're all destined to go back home and die. Because he doesn't want to kill anybody. He already has this stigma about... People already think he's a killer of these villains. He doesn't want to kill them, even though Iron Man kills his villains all the time, so no one has a problem with it. Well, he's, he's Spider-Man, not Spider-Boy Jr. He's moving past that. Oh, you're right, you're right. He's got to be his own man now. Anyway, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff happens. You've seen the movie. You know, if, and if everyone's seen the movie. If you haven't seen yes. the movie, what are you doing? You know what happens. So basically, MJ, uh, not MJ, Aunt May dies in a pretty great scene where she got a huge clap in my um theater where she says with great power also comes there must also come great ability heartbreaking scene i was shocked there because after goblin hit her with that glider i'm like oh crap she's dead and then she just gets up and walks yeah over i was to... like oh she's she's fine what, wait she's, she's not fine? oh she's she's fine no she's not fine did you just play that for comedy i honestly thought they did at first that's such a Marvel thing to do, is just have something terrible like that happen to a normal person, mm -hmm. and then it's just played off as okay. So, da-da-da, a lot of stuff happens. She dies. And then Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield come out. Great moments. Everyone's seen him on TikTok. He got spoiled. And then they team up. They team up. I'm doing this rapid fire. Yeah. We're talking about multiverse, not No Way Home. We're too late for that. Everyone knows what happens. No Way Home is intertwined enough that I think we can talk about it a bit more, just because... That's fair. Yeah. We're going to talk about What If in a bit as well. Mm -hmm. So, all three of them team up. Great, great action. Great one-on-one -on -one character moments as well. Especially with Andrew Garfield. Out of all three, I think he's the better actor. I think he's probably the best actor out of all three of them. Yeah. Just in, in he terms... Has yeah. Great, great moments talking about, weirdly enough, great moments talking about his ex, which is a great <laughs> terms of respect between him and Emma Stone. Then he started going too far. After Gwen Stacy died, he stopped pulling his punches, I think he said, and... Which, yeah, if you're going off of comic books, it's getting hit by a freight train. That's how powerful his punches are. So he's yeah. probably murdering people with one punch. Then again, as they joked, he's also not necessarily 
Spider-Man at his apex. They were joking, oh, you know, I fought a... I fought an alien. <laughs> oh, I've been to space. What have you done? I fought a Russian in a metal suit. <laughs> oh, that's cool, bro. And then he tells, no, but you're amazing. He's like, I appreciate that, yeah. They, they all have great moments because they all play Peter Parker very well. He's the least... The least popular middle child of the family. Mm -hmm. Of the spider family. They play that very literally, and I like that. Do you think Andrew should get his third movie? You know what? Just taking a look at DC, for example. This year, we just saw... Ryan and I separately just saw The Batman the other night. We're doing our best not to talk about it. Yeah, we talked way too long about it just before this podcast started. But, so we have Robert Pattinson's Batman this year. And then later on in the year, which, spoilers for the Flash movie, if you haven't... If you're avoiding trailers, yeah. I'm sorry in advance. But in the Flash movie, Ben Affleck's Batman is going to be a major part of that movie. And Michael Keaton's Batman as well. Both of them have big parts in the Flash movie. So this one year, we have Robert Pattinson, Ben Affleck, and Michael Keaton as Batman. All in... in not even in the same universe, necessarily. But they're just... The fact that all three have a No Way Home with the three different Spider-Men... Oh yeah, and DC also did Joker, and then also brought back Jared Leto's Joker in Zack Snyder's Justice League. Everyone was so happy and that whatnot. Jared Leto is back. But my point is, DC in particular has established that multiple versions of these characters can exist, and people can, they can get it. It's okay, it's not too complicated to understand anymore. So yeah, I'd be fine if Amazing Spider-Man 3... Unless you're my dad. <laughs> yeah. Who probably hasn't seen all the movies or No any... offense, dad, but you, you just... Like, if you keep up, you'll get it. Yeah, for sure. But it's also... Yeah, I think it... I think he deserves it, because his two other movies were poorly written. They were a little, a little bit rushed. I think he's... He deserves a, a third movie. How about I give you a counterpoint? How about... Just for the people who are maybe too confused by No Way Home and then another amazing Spider-Man movie coming out and then probably a Tom Holland Spider-Man 4, how about we give Andrew Garfield a Disney Plus show? Because that way, the fans who want to see it can see it. The people who would get too confused probably aren't watching it anyway. And you get a little more time with him to tell. That would be very... Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah. I'd be down for a show. Maybe give it a four or five episode miniseries. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not a, a show with multiple seasons. Let him get a little more time in there. For sure. Hell, even bring back Tobey Maguire for the same miniseries or a different one. Make a Spider-Man anthology show. I don't know. You could do. But only if he's Bully Maguire. <laughs> sure. <laughs> they go into the multiverse and fight the greatest enemy of the Spider-Verse. Bully Maguire. No, Avi Arid. <laughs> they go to fight the producer. <laughs> yeah. That's a deep cut for fans. Oh, Avi Arad and Topher Grace is Venom. Brilliant casting choice. And the original Electro. Let's get the guy from that 70s show <laughs> to play the most, Brock. the most bulky Spider-Man villain. Great choice. Sorry to throw shade at you, Topher Grace. If you're watching, you aren't, but... You're not. But if you are, you know. It was 15 years ago. We've moved on. I hope you've moved on. To you've moved on. I'm yeah. sure you have all the money in the world from those seven, that 70 show reruns. Yeah. But anyway. What was our point? We got off topic. Yes, they can coexist. Topic. They can coexist. All the Spider-Man team up. They send all of the villains back without their powers to save them. Great little Spider-Man moments in between Andrew Garfield catching MJ. Beautiful. Which is beautiful callback. He gets made all emotional. That made me tear up. Tobey Maguire getting stabbed, and he goes, it's okay, I've been stabbed before. Which I didn't remember, but he, he actually did in Spider-Man 3. Okay. When he was... I thought he was done for, and I was so pissed. I was like, you're not, you're not going to kill him off. 
I hate this trend Hollywood's on, where they just bring back old fan favorites just to kill them off. I'm so sick of it. Just let it be. Only exception Han Solo, because Harrison Ford wanted to die. Yeah. Anything anyway. that was not the best handled. Even if it makes sense for the story, I just hate how it's... how they're handling it. That's fair. So yeah. they, they win the day, but... Doctor Strange is having trouble because during the fight, the box that was containing the spell broke open, and the multiverse is expanding. It's it's going to attack, or it's going to go into the main universe. The main, yeah, the worlds are bleeding together, everything is coming to the universe, and, well, I mean, this world already has enough troubles with 7, 8 billion people. Do you want an infinite number of multiverses worth of people? Coming only if Crane comes in. No, not Crane. Uh, Kang. Kang. Also bringing uh, Craven. I yeah, love that sure. character. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. He was Craven in was one, one of the, the silhouettes. silhouettes. Yeah. yeah. It was Craven, Scorpion, a uh, version Cat. of Rhino, Black Cat. But yeah, so Doctor Strange, who, by the way, has a lot of screen time in this movie, and I think did a very good job of being, like, the grumpy, like, stepdad. But not in the way that Tony Stark did, where his shadow no. looms over the whole movie. He was just... He was a supporting character. Been in the Grand Canyon for 12 hours! It's just geometry. But he did... He did great. So... Tom Holland's Spider-Man has the brilliant idea of, hey, what if everyone forgets who I am? And that would that stop the multiverse collapsing in on itself for some reason. Cause, but what was, cause movie. Now, what was the? I think the multiverse broke open because ah, oh, what was it? They were trying to say anybody who knows. It was something about anybody who knows Spider Man. Anyone who knows Peter Parker is Spider Man. It comes in. Yeah, and then that made everybody in the multiverse who knew Peter Parker was Spider-Man come in. So forgetting Peter Parker existed, I think that was why it stopped the mm -hmm. multiverse from converging. Because if they forgot Peter Parker existed, then... But then again, that also... Maybe I just misunderstood, but... No, I think everyone in the multiverse forgets, except there is a hint where... Because it, it's, it's very funny where... It's, kinda, it's funny, but it's also sad where... Tom Holland is saying goodbye to MJ. Very emotional scene. She says, you better come find me because I'm just going to figure it out anyway. A little, little callback to Far From Home. Yeah. And Tom Holland says his goodbye to her and to Ned and to the two other Spider-Mans. They have that spider hug, which is a great moment. Huge cheer. In the, I, would, I would love to see that movie again with a full-packed audience. Yeah. And so the multiverse gets fixed. Tom Holland is on his own. He goes to the coffee shop where she's working and he realizes, sees the bandage on her forehead that she still has from the fight. And he realizes to keep them safe, I can't know who, or they can't know who I am. That's the sacrifice I'm willing to make to keep them safe and go out to Boston. Great bit um, of character growth there. And it's a great moment where you see his struggle of wanting to reveal himself. Tom Holland, he is a brilliant actor. Not When I said Andrew Garfield is the best actor, I wasn't dissing the other two. No, Tom no. Holland, They're Tom both Holland good. is a great actor. And as he's leaving the store and after his little discussion with MJ, you see MJ kind of like have this little thought like, do I know who that is? So there's a little hint. Is it going to be hinted on in maybe spider-man 4 or maybe doctor strange but that's i hope based... he moves on to black cat or gwen stacy or something if only for a movie or two yeah possibly. i want to see other spider-man love interests here it would be pretty bold to just get rid of his whole supporting cast and start from scratch in spider-man 4 yeah i wish i saw more of his new suit when he was i know it's a beautiful out. suit but it's like it's a mixture of both the other two spider-mans yeah and basically, that is where the multiverse is. It's a little broken. Can we go back a few? Yeah. I have a question here. So if everybody forgot Peter Parker was Spider-Man, does that mean the other... 
Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire's universe is all for God as well? Does that mean Tobey Maguire's gonna go back to MJ after 20 <laughs> years and she doesn't know he's Spider-Man still? I just assumed to make things simple, it was just hi him, Peter Parker, and like in that universe. Yeah, okay. I'm just, I'm not sure of the rules here. The rules are messy. You know. They're messy. But it's, you know what? We don't care. We don't care because we yeah. enjoyed it. You can solve everything by saying, hey, it's magic. Yeah. That's it. You know what? Plot holes don't have to affect enjoyment. We're allowed to like things even if they don't totally work on paper. Like, like, most of the DCE. <laughs> We're allowed to like it. Yeah. But yeah. Let's talk about what if now. Yes. The one that really gets into what the multiverse is and... A lot of good episodes, a lot of okay episodes, a lot of shit ones. Yeah, I'm not a fan of What If on the whole. And I think, personally, the whole thing, my biggest problem with What If... Actually, I have a lot of problems with What If. But my biggest problem is that they decided to tie it all together in the end. Yeah. To me, the biggest draw of something like What If is the idea that these universes are self-contained. Whatever happens in it... Those are the consequences. We don't need to see what happens after the episodes end. Because if it goes... well or badly, that's it. That universe doesn't ever need to be seen again. So the fact that we tie everything together and make this multiversal Avengers team just really rub me the wrong way because we see... what happens to these characters after their episode and I think that defeats the entire purpose of seeing these snapshots of different worlds in the multiverse. There's no... They bring it back into the main MCU where there's no consequences ever because everything needs to tie together. You can't kill off characters we've seen because, oh, we may need to use them again. Then they just... Oh, it's so frustrating. That's fair. And also the episodes they chose. They could do anything they wanted, and why did they... Choose these episodes. <laughs> Who wanted to see Party Thor as an alternate ver- Oh my god. You could do anything with Thor in this series. Time. Absolutely anything. And that's the one you choose. Now that episode, once again, I like to see the good in things. In the context of What If, it was decent comic relief. I'm fine with it as an episode. But as a concept, I'm very annoyed that's what they chose to go with. I'm not complaining about its execution, but the fact that they bothered to go there. Mm -hmm. What else bothered me? I'm trying to stretch my memory back. What other what ifs were there? There was, I think, I'm just going to go off episode by episode. The first one was Captain Carter. That one bothered me a lot too. Which nothing really changed. It's just Peggy Carter as Captain America. Yes, how about I get on that a little bit, because, like I was saying earlier on, First Avenger is my favorite movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and to see it just replicated over again with very little differences, episode one of What If made me already think, what's the point of this? Yeah. You only have so many episodes of this show, and your pilot episode is basically just a retread of a movie you already did, condensed into 20 minutes. You could do absolutely anything with Peggy Carter. Or even Captain Carter. But you just chose to tell the first Avengers story over again, but worse. So, in the second episode of What If, there was T'Challa as Star-Lord. And I think that one was really well done, because it was a bit different. That was better. And then there was a... Th I can't remember the third... Maybe I'll just look it up real quick. The third one was the the Hank Pym one. The Hank yellow Pym jacket. One, that one was decent. They're all, I say they were all, it was just like, I think out of the Disney Plus shows, they were, that one was the weakest in terms of just like execution. Well, not execution, but just, I don't really know. It just felt like there was just so many different ideas and, you know, what could you, what could you do with them? And they didn't go too far on it. So, yeah. Episode 4 was amazing, though. The one the with Doctor Strange Dr. trying Strange to save Evil. Christine. 
Evil Doctor Strange. Yeah, the Doctor Strange one was amazing, and... Zombies one was stupid. Terrible. That one was terrible. Next one... Next one was the Killmonger one. I actually kind of like that one. Because I like Michael B. Jordan. I'm a fan of his. If Thor was an only child, that one was a waste of time. What if Ultron won? I kind of like that one. And then episode 9 is when they all team up together, and it's just kind of just like your basic Marvel team up. And the implications that has on the multiverse is really, we don't really know that much as of right now. Uh, we just know that there is the Watcher. That's how we're able to see all these different multiverses, is because there's the Watcher, and he sees all these different multiverses. But we don't really know why this, not, not necessarily matters, but why this is such a big deal right now, or what implication it has on Marvel as a whole. I think it's just to show, I think this show is just to be silly and just to show the different types of universes that there can be. And I would have been okay with that if they didn't try to tie it all in together. Mm -hmm. They tried to have an overall story where they had this multiversal Avengers thing, and if that was their goal, just to show the different flavors of what the multiverse could be, it's a failure. Because they didn't go far enough on the concepts they chose, and... They made it all too relevant in the end. Mm -hmm. I did kind of like, though, how they try to give Ultron a little bit more to do. I'm one of those people who actually like Age of Ultron, but this one, you can definitely see it's more, I don't want to say comic book accurate, but more just how sinister Ultron could be. So I kind of like that he did that. And what would happen if he had all the Infinity Stones? And that was a great episode. Okay, can we get to the bit that really got me upset about what if? I just... Go for it. After you're talking about the multiversal threats and stuff, I think you were just saying, I remembered that the very end, when they were facing Ultron, I just had to look up this. Okay, so this all-star team, at the very end, to take down multiversal Ultron, Doctor Strange, Captain Carter, Star-Lord T'Challa, Killmonger, Party Thor, Gamora and Black Widow. So, that's the team? You choose to take down this big threat? How about just like, 10 Thors? <laughs> or a bunch of Captain Marvel? Or a Hulk with, like, Mjolnir, you know? Who brought Black Widow and Captain Carter and Killmonger into this? These are just... Why? This is a threat that could destroy everything, and these are the people you choose? What the hell, show? Oh man, that... That really frustrated. Yeah. Have a whole team of Captain Marvels and Hulks. I Thors. think the only implication that the What If series as a whole has on the effect of Multiverse of Madness is that Captain Carter is probably in this movie. Because oh, you probably. can see her shield in the poster. And in principle, I don't mind that. I don't mind if they bring her back for that. It just bothered me in the context of this show that they had to yeah. do this story. I, yeah. I'm anyway. getting worked up about it. Can you tell? I can tell. So let's move on to something that we'll probably like. And that is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. What are our thoughts on? What are our theories? What do we think is going to happen based off the first trailer? Why don't you go ahead? Yeah, as we discussed, we both grew up on Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. I think he's... A great director with a very unique eye for sense of humor in particular. He's got a really nice way of presenting dark humor especially. Which I think is... Superhero movies could use more of his sort of flavor. And I hope working in the MCU system doesn't hamper his style too much. I'd like to see him just get to be Sam Raimi's version of Doctor Strange. But just based on the trailers of Multiverse of Madness, I'm really liking the direction they're going with this because I know back in the 60s when I don't remember if there was a co-creator of Doctor Strange, but I know Steve Ditko, who co-created Spider-Man actually, was the creator of Doctor Strange. I think it was Steve Ditko and Stan Lee. But, well, probably more Steve Ditko. Because Doctor Strange in the 60s was most famous for its trippy visual art style. 
I don't think comic books had ever shown anything so crazy like that. The different worlds Doctor Strange could go to, and space, or the multiverse, or magical realms. And that was one of my complaints about the original Doctor Strange, was that by 2016, Marvel had already dabbled in the weird stuff enough that I didn't think they went far enough with that yeah. first Doctor Strange. I think they grounded it a little more than... They nerfed its potential. Yeah, they did some, like, excellent visuals, but they didn't go as far as they could have, like, in in the comics. And you can see from this trailer, little nitpicks that they're gonna, they're gonna go weird. There's even a part where they might even go into animation. Really? So. And I love that. That, to me, is Doctor Strange at its full potential. Although... Traditionally, with superhero movies, the sequels seem to be better, in most cases, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Most superhero franchises you can think of, the sequels are usually better. Yeah. Can't really think of one that isn't. Iron Man 2, but... Oh, that's true. <laughs> Thor The Dark World. But those are... They're okay. I know, I know. <laughs> they're not bad movies, but they're not... We could do a whole episode on, like, our own personal tier list for Marvel movies, but... Oh, for sure. Anyway, should we say what we think is going to happen in this in the multiverse? Let's go for it. All right, so what I think is going to happen... Uh, this is all based off the first trailer, so if you're not into trailers, this potential spoiler alerts, if you don't like theories, it looks like Doctor Strange is being uh, reprimanded by... Maybe the Illuminati, which is a group from the comics who I believe they're like the head of all things multiverse, like from different points throughout the Marvel multiverse, the top dog. So it's an Iron Man, it's a Doctor Strange, it's Mr. Fantastic, it could, it's Professor X, who is probably in the movie, because you can hear Patrick Stewart's voice. I'm not a Marvel Comics nerd, so I don't, like I know a lot about Marvel Comics, but I'm not. Just for example, like we were saying, we were more DC fans growing mm -hmm. up, so I know way more about DC's multiverse. But I really know nothing about the Illuminati or yeah, anything like that. That's the most I know about them. So, am Marvel I guess... Marvel Comics has too many teams and stuff. It's such a bloated universe in mm -hmm. the comics, I can't keep up. So, my theory is that after Doctor Strange almost messes up the multiverse he gets reprimanded and then there's going By to people be people who know what they're doing yeah and then there's going to be a event that wanda causes that will mess up the multiverse and then you get all these different universes coming in and they are going to send him to deal with wanda and it seems like they might set up wanda to be the villain which would be interesting to see or I maybe not maybe they're Maybe Baron Mordo's going to be the villain. He's the main Teasing doctor. That. Oh, that's true, yep. He's back as well. So you know what would confuse me about this Illuminati attacking Doctor Strange? Where were they during Loki with the TVA and when Kang the Conqueror and everything? Where were these people when these other folks are messing up the multiverse, right? I don't know how they're going to explain that away, that they're only coming out now. They might do the Captain Marvel excuse where it's like well you're not the only universe but she's like you're not the only planet or okay or how about alternatively we can say that because the tva was pruning all these alternate timelines this illuminati group could never form before now because the multiverse was for all intents and purposes it didn't really exist so now that loki broke the multiverse and these multiversal paths have been allowed to happen with branching timelines well, maybe that allowed the opportunity for this group to come together. Wow, you should write for Marvel. <laughs> I feel like if any explanation works, I just came up with this on the spot, but I feel That's like... That's pretty... Yeah, I believe that. That, to me, is the best reason why they were never around during mm -hmm. Loki. Because they couldn't have existed during Loki. That would make the most sense. I feel like what I would want from this movie, I just want weird. That's all I want. I want weird. It was supposed to be horror, and then they changed it up. I just want weird magic fighting. That's all I expect. And yep. I'm not entirely too sure what... We really don't know what what's going to happen at the end of this movie and what 
what it will cause in Marvel going forward, because it's just all speculation at this point. Is there just going to be, is it going to be like, what if episode nine, where something really gets messed up at the end and they have to take all these different people from different multiverses or I've, I feel like Marvel's going to be kind of conservative with that though. Mm -hmm. I see in the trailers, they brought in Dr. Strange Supreme from what if? Yeah. But I feel like they're not going to go. I don't know how far they want to go with it because people who haven't seen What If, there's a lot of people who would watch a Doctor Strange movie but aren't going to bother with a random Disney Plus cartoon. Yeah. That they've never even heard of. They just... Marvel's got to be very careful at this point because their their fan base is starting to split. People aren't keeping up on everything they're putting out anymore. So they have to be careful about who they're putting in Doctor Strange with no context. I heard one theory that this is ha- this movie is going to try or might help bring in X-Men into the Marvel Universe. If Professor X is there, like the trailer suggests, then that's not a... I mean, that would make sense. Mm-hmm. Which would be awkward because Wanda's in the universe. And it would fix the stupid joke in WandaVision where... Ralph Boner. Ralph Boner. That's stupid. I don't care if it's misleading, it's dumb. But And I hate you, Marvel, for doing that. You promised me X-Men in the Marvel like, Universe? I'm gonna go off here for a bit. Sure, And go you ahead. make it Ralph Boner? Huh? You can't just tease me, maybe Wolverine joining up with, like, Captain America, or, well, not Captain America, or, or you know, Quicks, the, like, an actual Quicksilver, or Cyclops, or Jean Grey, or uh, there's just, there's just so many potential awesome X Men out there, and you give me Ralph Boner. I hate you. You know what gets me about that that I just realized? You jogged my memory of something I think I blocked out. What's that? Marvel did this before. They pulled the same fake out with Ben Kingsley's Mandarin. Oh. This, don't get me started. Ten years ago, they did the same thing in Iron Man 3. They set up this awesome thing that people are going to love, and then they rip it out from under. You give us Ralph Sean Boner. Sean G kind of fixed it, but... Kinda. They give us Ralph Boner and Trevor Slattery. Yay. A washed up actor. Yay. <sighs> oh, Marvel. I did like Shang-Chi's version of the Mandarin. I'm not complaining about Shang-Chi's Mandarin, but don't pretend like that was anything more than a retcon after people got furious with them in Iron Man 3. Shang-Chi, best thing in Marvel Phase 4 so far. No Way Home I like better, but Shang-Chi has more- Oh, that's true. Sorry, before No Way Home. Shang-Chi has more artistic merit. I like that movie more creatively, but I like No Way Home better. Yeah, I I meant to say before No Way Home. Because that was my mindset before going into No Way Home. Yeah. Can't believe they pulled the same trick twice. How much more of Phase 4 are we getting? Is this... I don't even know. I feel like Phase 4 is going to extend down to... Because what is it? What's supposed to come out? It's Doctor Strange. I know Ant-Man 2 has Kang in it. Ant-Man 3 has Kang in it. And then Guardians Volume 3 is the holiday next year? special? The holiday special is a different thing. Oh, okay. The holiday special is a separate... Oh, it's like a Disney Plus thing? Yeah, the James Gunn's making. I was trying to... Oh, also Black Widow. I hated that movie. <laughs> wasn't a fan. Didn't hate it, but I wasn't a fan. And it's just poorly done. My expectations were here, and somehow it managed to be here. Oh, Moon Knight's coming out soon, that's true. I am hyped for Moon Knight. There's Moon Knight coming out, Secret Invasions, Ironheart, Armor Wars, I Am Groot. What? Is this old? Oh, I'm looking at Disney Plus show. Oh, right, right, right. So there's, of course, what am I thinking? Thor Love and Thunder, Black Panther 2. Which, eh, they shouldn't, they, I don't know. That's going to be interesting. Captain Marvel 2. Guardians of the Galaxy, Blade, the Ant-Man movie, and Fantastic Four. 
So it looks like Fantastic Four is going to be the end of Phase 4. Ha! You know... And a lot of shows. I said it around the time Endgame came out to people in my circle, but I'm just not as excited for Marvel anymore. No. After Endgame ended and all the heroes that... Well, like you were saying, we were 10 years old when the first Iron Man came out, and we were just that age to get hooked. But now all those original heroes are dead or retired, and I just... I mean, I like Spider-Man, and I like Doctor Strange, and I'm curious to see how... Captain Marvel 2 or the Fantastic Four? I'm curious. But I, I just... I mean, I'll see them. I'll see them, but I'm not that invested anymore. No, ever since Endgame, it was like, okay, so you got rid of arguably the best Marvel villain ever. Yeah. Who's next? And of course, you're not Pang. just gonna... You're not just gonna end it there, because money. And there's stories to finish or to continue wait actually doesn't okay yeah that's that's very interesting my mind's turning now because i just remembered you were saying fantastic four is the end of phase four phase four potentially so i'm just stretching back to something i read in marvel comics and i think kang the conqueror is a relative of reed richards in the future or something like that i i think he's actually Related to Reed and Sue? His great, 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 grandson. I think it is something like that. That's wild. So, it actually would make sense from a Marvel Comics lore standpoint that Phase 4, if Kang is the major villain, would tie in with the Fantastic Four. I just can't wait for the... And if you see from the list, there's no Avengers movie posted. I heard that Kevin Foggy or somebody, I read this article just a few days ago. Somebody said there wasn't going to be any more Avengers movies. Really? Yeah, somebody said Endgame was the last one. See, that's, that's, that's weird to me. Because maybe it's because the original six are like most of them are gone. They're the Avengers. They're the Avengers. But you can have different groups. There's got to be a team up. Well, maybe it's not like a full team up movie like an Endgame. Because if you did that again, it's like, well, you don't have the originals. So it's not that impactful, but I assume what they're doing, what they've done with No Way Home, and what they're going to do with multiverses, you're going to have each hero pop into a different movie. Just off the top of my head, I'm going to assume that Hulk is in Love and Thunder again, and I think... Probably. They're introducing, well, what's her name? Monica Rambeau from WandaVision is going to be in Captain Marvel 2, and they're also introducing Ms. Marvel into that one. So there's... Mm -hmm. They're kind of... Fitting together with these team-ups, but not yeah. going for the grand team-ups anymore. Which, okay, Captain Marvel and Hulk cameoed at the end of Shang-Chi. Which, yeah, which... I don't know what that's about. Question, how is he Bruce Banner again? They never explain. Never explain. Also, it's a post credit scene, so they're not going to explain it, but just how? So you better explain that to me. And his arm still hurt? I want my money back. The short answer for me is the budget was too small. They used the budget on the. <laughs> that's true. They used, they used the budget on the dragon. <laughs> Nobody wanted to animate Professor Hulk again. I so remember, they... yeah, I remember watching the movie first time in theaters and being like, oh, thank God this movie got delayed so much because of COVID because they spent all their time on the CGI dragon. It looks amazing on the big screen. It looks so good. Yeah, it looked fantastic. But yeah. I don't know if there's much for me to say on the multiverse. I don't know how much more you have to say, but I'm yeah. just here for it. I didn't have a spiel or exactly, but I did want to say that I wanted to admit that I'm not really a fan of the multiverse in general. It's just a, you know, this isn't a problem I have with Marvel's execution of it thus far. It's just a problem I have with the comics. And how I see the movies, because the movies are so close to the comics, I feel like they're going to make the same mistakes. And the problem with the comics is that the multiverse is an idea that sounds really good on paper, and it can lead to some pretty cool stories, but I don't know if it can carry Marvel going forward, because the, the main problem with it is it's confusing. We're already talking about what people understand bringing in Andrew Garfield 
and whatnot, and Sony's got their Morbius. Mo- Mo- Mobius, whatever. Who cares? Their vampire <laughs> movie coming out, and then there's the Venom movies, and the main MCU isn't even branched out into the multiverse too much yet, but just, it's gonna get too confusing. And then the MCU is probably gonna force itself into irrelevancy. Ironically, well, I, I don't know if that's ironic, but because the, probably using that wrong, but the comics, I feel like a lot of people don't read them anymore because of things like the multiverse. Yeah. They got so overblown decades ago that people just can't break into the comics anymore without knowing 60 years of history and what the multiverse is. And oh, this character's actually a multiversal person and differing timelines and reboots and stuff. And the MCU's gonna go the same way. They're probably gonna end up with a full on comic like reboot at some point. And making themselves too much like the comics is gonna backfire. Cause then, and just like the comics, you're gonna be left with guys like us who, yeah, I've been following it since Iron Man in 2008. Still watching most of this stuff. I'm still on board. But are kids, are 10 year old kids nowadays hopping into the multiverse of madness gonna understand what's happening if they don't feel like watching 20 movies and five shows? And the rule is you have to take a year break watching Infinity War to Endgame. That's the rule. That's the rule, kids. You can't just, you can't just jump right in. You have to go through what we went through. All right? I just think that this phase of the MCU is gonna hurt later on because Mm -hmm. say for example i don't know when i'm gonna have kids let's say another 10 years when i have kids in 10 years and they're 10 years old after that my age when i first watched iron man yeah i probably would be fine to show them iron man hey great this is a good standalone superhero movie about iron man i like iron man you can like iron man but i'm probably not gonna pop in the multiverse of madness for them at 10 years old Because they need all this explanation about what's happening. I can't just show my kids a movie anymore. It's true. That's going to hurt Marvel going forward generationally. Just like the comics. Mm -hmm. It's all about... I'm very worried about how it's going to turn out at the end of this phase. Obviously, they have Disney money, so they can go as long as they want with this. Budget's not the problem as long as people are paying for it. To exactly. See. I'm worried, but also not at the same time, because you're putting smart people at the helm of some of most of these movies. Just like with Sean Chi got me excited to see him team up with other potential Avengers. Yep. The Spider Man multiverse, I think, was done very well. Yep. But it's and, only the beginning. And it's only the beginning. So I'm very interested to see what the implication because this to me this doctor strange movie is going to be this is the the repercussions of using the multiverse this is what is happening there's going to be like a huge cliffhanger at the end of this movie i can feel it i feel like it's going to happen and then all these solo movies with guardians with thor love and thunder with ant-man with fantastic four black panther they're all going to get hit somewhat maybe not black panther they're all gonna get hit somewhat with the multiverse and i feel like it's just going to be so hard to execute this so that's why you have to have everyone working on the same page but that's just too tough i don't know how they're going to do it but i'm interested to to that point i was just thinking about what you were saying there about everybody getting hit with this multiverse problem and that leads us back to what we were saying before about there being no more avengers movies And I feel like that's the big problem, though, actually. Because what happened before was Marvel Phase 1. You could watch the movies individually, and if you didn't, whatever. But they led to the Avengers. And then Phase 2, more stuff happened. It builds up. And then, you see, big things happen in the Avengers. More things build up. Infinity War and Endgame. The Avengers movies were the culmination of each phase. Yeah. They were where everything came together. But now there's no focal point in Marvel. Everything's just kind of happening. There's no... There's no... It's like a checkpoint in a video game now. Where the the end of Phase 4 is Fantastic Four. And I don't know how many years away that is. 
That's a really long time between Endgame and Fantastic Four. That's a long way to go without a checkpoint for people to kind of regroup. You know? Yeah. I think they're going to have to do at least one more Avengers film. Just for... Just so people can keep up. Just to... Yeah, just for people to help keep up. Just to get them all... You don't even have to bring everyone together. But just be a nice little checkpoint. Maybe even have the surviving original six even come in. And who knows? We could be... This could age poorly. And we could be in Marvel Phase 8. Like, decades later. And Robert... Downey Jr. comes back and makes a cameo, comes through like a magic portal, or whatever, and you know, or they could even, if this doesn't go well, they wait a few years and reboot the whole franchise. Hollywood's been known to do that with, they did that with Spider Man. They could do, I don't think they'll do that. Well, see, because... I think they've written themselves into a corner at this point because now that we've Establish things like the Tobey Maguire universe and the Andrew Garfield universe exist within Marvel too. Well, now we know that it's... Oh, what am I trying to say? It's hard to reboot now. You could reboot those old ones because there was no context. But now mm -hmm. we know that everything exists within the same multiverse. Well, now there's not really much of an excuse to recast Tom Holland as Spider-Man because... What are we going to do? If it's not Tom Holland's Spider-Man, that just means we're following another Spider-Man from another multiverse. You can't, you can't really recast people anymore. Right. Now, within the main universe. Because then we think they're going to be from another universe where they look different. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just going to lead to confusion. I think this is very controversial for I love controversy. someone who is a Marvel fan, but also a DC fan, I honestly think they should have stopped at Endgame. And I know there's a ton of money in Cut it. Cut their losses. Cut their losses. And this is before most of Phase 4 is done. Uh, so far, they've done, I would say, okay. They haven't done, they have, they haven't done terrible. I have not been a fan, like I said. I didn't like What If or Black Widow. Or Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I was pretty meh about things like ooh, Loki. And I'm trying to even think of... Oh, and the Eternals. I was pretty meh on too. The only things I've... I loved WandaVision, Hawkeye, No Way Home, and Shang-Chi. But the batting average for Phase, phase 4 is... It's 50-50 at this point. And yeah. that's, not, that's not good enough. It's not good at all. You're you're like a you're a bench player with that. Yeah, it's just they're releasing too much and not enough of it's good. There hasn't been anything, I'd say, absolutely terrible, unwatchable, but it's just you can't I would build argue, the universe. I would argue Black Widow is unwatchable, but that's just me. I didn't dislike it's, it that it's much. Not, it's not unwatchable because of Florence Pugh. That's it. If it was yeah. someone else in the role, she carries that movie. Yeah. But the point and is... Scarlet does okay. She does fine. I liked uh, David Harbour's Red Guardian as well. Oh, he was good too, yeah. The cast wasn't the problem. The characters were fine. But the point is, back in early Marvel, they never would have let half the movies being less than average slide. Could you imagine if the first five Marvel movies leading up to the Avengers, most of them were below average? The MCU no. never would have gotten off the ground. They can't maintain this level of average or below average quality for most of their output now yeah it's not sustainable if they want to keep the franchise going yeah i feel like this movie is going to make is going to make marvel continue or it, this is their last phase so i'm very cautious very worried for marvel because i do like marvel yep but also i want them to i'm succeed. excited I'm excited. We're both fans. We're both yeah. fans. We want them to succeed. We're not... We're going to consume this stuff either way. We don't want to be whining about this on a podcast. We want to be raving about things like No Way Home. But, you know, we have to be realistic here. See the cracks in the armor. See where problems may arise and mm -hmm. where they are arising already. The problem with the multiverse is that any problem can be solved now. 
that's the that's the whole thing and i hate that argument it is lazy writing but it, it is it is somewhat true but also you're putting veterans at the front of these movies like sam raimi i it was james watts again for no way home who was yep. the director john watts john watts my bad john watts you're putting these these people who who know these franchises who know I don't know if they well they probably know comic books they know what to do with them so I trust that these Marvel movies are going in a good direction but I am worried but if if it does go bad we have the Batman that we could always talk about (laughs) yep I always trust Marvel to be at least average in quality there's never been an outright terrible Marvel movie, and I think they're really good at consistency of quality. Like, I think they will be okay going forward. But the problem is, if, like I was saying before, if only, if less than half of your movies are above average, it's, it's just not sustainable. For sure. I'm okay if it's average, but my enthusiasm to see them is going to go down with each average installment. Yeah, for sure. I'll care enough to maybe check it out, but I'm not going to be super hyped about them Mm -hmm. going forward. I'm not going to say, oh, wow, Doctor Strange 5 is out? I have to see that immediate opening weekend. (laughs) And maybe it's because us, maybe it is because we're getting older and we've gotten used to the the other Marvel movies, and maybe this new phases and for our generation but we'll never we'll never know until may when the multiverse does come out so basically i think both of our reactions to the multiverse is we're cautious but excited it's got potential but also potential to go very badly like a first date yeah it's like a first date you've already been on but you're gonna try again that's that's the best i could describe it it's like we were going okay up to Endgame, and then we decided to take a break, and now we're back, and it's getting crazy because we're trying way too hard. We're trying new things. We're trying yeah. to change who we are, and you're not any different from who you are. But it's not what it was. We're trying to recapture it's the magic. It's not what it was. It's not novel anymore. <laughs> we really, <laughs> we're really showing our DC fandom right now. <laughs> I just, I love Marvel. I don't know why I'm shitting on it so much right now, but I do. But it's just, you got to look at this realistically. And there's going to be some fanboys, maybe, who say, you don't understand. You don't know till the movies come out. And you're right. We are the fanboys. Though. But we are the fanboys. You have to be cautious. We went to film school. All we were taught was criticism. It's yeah. a fact. So you have to look at this and think, realistically, how much further can they go with this? And we could be we could be 90 and we could see Marvel phase 12. If we're comparing to DC, I'm going to go there. I think DC's got more longevity right now because Marvel is, you know, like I said, they're average. They're good at what they do. They don't make bad movies, but they're so average. DC swings for the fences and a lot of times they don't succeed. But when they land it, they really land it. That's true. Yeah, they try for. They go so out there with things like the Batman. Marvel would never make a movie like the Batman. Or even things like, oh, I don't know. Just some, like Wonder Woman. Or, like, that's one a lot of people really like to... Marvel doesn't make movies like that. DC has their failures. But they also have some really big successes when they get it right. Mm -hmm. Like, or I'll say... Things like, like the first Suicide Squad versus James Gunn's Suicide Squad. I freaking love the second Suicide Squad because it, like, Marvel would not make a movie that crazy. Or even going back to, you know, let's, let's take DC out of it just because I know that's a heated discussion. Let's go to Fox's X-Men. They would never make a movie like Deadpool or Logan. No. I freaking love those movies. Marvel doesn't take those chances. And I think that's why they're going to stagnate going forward. Whereas DC has the potential to overtake them because they're... They're trying harder. They're making, like, they're just, they're trying more things. Or Joker kind of movie. Marvel wouldn't make that either. Yeah, Marvel wouldn't make a Joker movie and then be like, yeah, that's it. There's no sequel, you know. 
They won't. They won't do that. I think there is a sequel to Joker. There probably will be. I think. I think they're. Looking but at they. It. What? It, sorry. What I meant was they're not going to make like a Joker movie and have it not, not con- and not connect it to the whole universe or whatever. Yeah. But it's just I, I'm very interested to see how this goes, and I cannot wait to talk about the Batman next time we're on this podcast. There's just so much somewhat negativity during this podcast that I'm willing to talk about something super positive. I hate to rave about the multiverse in such a negative way, but just they haven't they haven't really haven't blown convinced me away. us yet. No. Yeah. They're like okay, so what are we what are we on the multiverse so far? So we have I won't even count WandaVision because that's such a Yeah. That was a tease. So what we have of the multiverse so far Loki, Loki was what if? Okay. Loki was okay. That's that's one thing. What if? Didn't like it. No way home. Loved it. So right now, three we're, things. Yeah, right now there's three things in the main multiverse, and or wait, was was there three? Is there anything we're missing here? I just want to double check that. Loki, what if? No way home. Multiverse of madness. You could technically say Hawkeye because a kingpin. Maybe, but who I'm not knows? gonna go that far yet. Which I hope, since now those Netflix shows are going to be on Disney+, Plus, that they continue Defenders. And if not Defenders, at least Charlie Cox is Daredevil in some way. I hope he shows up in a future movie. doesn't have to be Doctor Strange. I would love to see it. Loved his cameo in No Way Home. I'm a really good... I wanted to scream in the movie theater where he went, I'm a really good lawyer. I was like, yes, you are! That also worries me too, to be honest. I I don't know, man. I love Charlie Cox. I do too. Daredevil is my favorite Marvel character of all time. Comics, movies, TV, whatever. Like Daredevil is my favorite. The man's blind, people. He's blind and he can kick your ass. Think about that. I was so upset when they canceled that show, and I'm still bitter about it to this day. I could I could make a whole solo episode of this podcast just ranting about my love for daredevil as a character i love punisher as well john bernthal is amazing yeah punisher was great in that role too but i'm just worried that they're bringing him back now because i i didn't love how they handled kingpin and hawkeye yeah and the fact that where daredevil season three ended off was such a great ending for daredevil and for kingpin that just to bring them Back at all nearly risks ruining that ending. Season three is a perfection. I know it's it's so good, and like I said, I was bitter that they canceled it. But then after a while, I'm like, if it has to end there, I kind of don't want to see them again because they're gonna ruin it now. Mm-hmm. Also, Kingpin's not dead. There's no oh, way. Oh no, no freaking way. No freaking way. It's gonna like cut to like the Kingpin show or something, and it's gonna show him like. Uh, Actually, Echo. well, in the comics, he got Echo's shot in the face, up. right? Or whatever. Oh, the Echo Show. You're right. Yeah. That's where he's going to show up again. Apparently, in the comics, he got shot in the face before, and he was fine. So, Spoilers, spoilers. for Hawkeye. Forgot to... Well, it's, it's just get the free trial. We said spoilers for everything Marvel at the top. Yeah, like if we... we okay, we said spoilers for Loki, WandaVision, No Way Home, but... If you've seen all three of those, you've seen Hawkeye too, let's be clear. Like, come on. That's yeah, true. Hawkeye's a fun Christmas Christmas show. Yeah. Got me in the holiday spirit. It did. It really did. Haley Steinfeld? Yeah, great. Perfect choice. And they I saw in an interview where they were like, Oh, she was our one and only first choice. Sure. There's no there was no one else. And I was like, good. <laughs> but yeah, that was great. Let's go back to Doctor Strange. So how do we feel about bringing Professor X back as, let's say, the Patrick Stewart version specifically? Because that one, once again, I'm a little back and forth on. Because, spoilers for Logan, sorry, but I really liked his ending in Logan. And I don't know if I wanted to see Professor X back as Patrick Stewart. If they brought back McAvoy, I wouldn't be complaining about right now. Yeah. Because McAvoy still had some story left in him, but Patrick Stewart's version specifically got a good send-off. And just like I wouldn't want to see Hugh Jackman back either, they got their good ending, and I don't... I don't want to risk ruining it, just for a multiverse story. I understand why they're doing the Patrick Stewart one, just because of nostalgia. Oh, yeah. And maybe the... Oh my god, you just said his name. James McAvoy one is 
more recent that it's not that big of a draw. First but class. If this is how if this is how they bring back X Men as a whole, I'll be happy with it. Yep. I know they're bringing back the animated show from the '90s and putting it yeah. on Disney Plus. They're also making a new season of it. I think. Yes. Or an no, X Men right, right. show yeah, yeah. with that style or something like that. Now, if they did bring back the X Men as a whole in the MCU, and it was the Fox version. Which version would you like to see them bring back? The OG one from the 2000s for nostalgia purposes? Or the first class days of future past? Well, I guess it would be the Apocalypse Dark Phoenix versions. Or maybe like a, or maybe a combo. Have like, yeah, Halle Berry Storm with, I don't know, what's her name? Sophie Turner. Sophie Turner's Jean Grey, exactly what I was thinking of. You read my mind. See, that's tough because... In both universes, each character, I think the Storm in the original, the OG cast is better than in the new one, just because she's not given a lot to do. And yeah. I think... Jean Grey was okay both times. Who was better? Oh, there's no one really... <laughs> I was thinking who was better as a side character. There's no one really better in the new ones that I'm thinking of. As a side character? Yeah, as a side character. Maybe, maybe Sophie Turner. I liked Sophie Turner was good. Their Nightcrawler was good too. Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler was good. In if they did, I would be interested to see him do a mix. That'd be cool. Bring back both versions. Bring back both. Hell, they did that in Days of Future Past already. Great movie. That was good. Yeah. Um. That one got both. So. See, that's that's so tough because I love Ian McAllen and I love. Patrick Stewart? Michael oh, Fassbender. Fassbender. Yeah. And they both play Magneto so well. These are the brilliant actors from different generations. See, that's where I kind of want to see them both back again. because yeah, do both. Because I feel like... Now, if we're going back to Logan, like I said, they've got great endings for Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart. But I was kind of sad we never got to see what happened to Magneto. So I, I'd kind of like to see them bring back Ian McKellen's Magneto just to... Just to wrap up his story, because the last time we saw him was... Okay, well, I guess there was two times. We saw him last in Days of Future Past, and then he kind of just disappeared. But I'd kind of like to see them wrap up Ian McKellen and then bring in Fassbender for the long haul. Yeah, for sure. Which would also be... Nope, that's weird. That's weird now, because in the comics, Magneto is... The father of Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, but he's the father of Quicksilver in the Fox version. But he wasn't Wanda's brother in the MCU, so... Yeah, it's... Uh... We don't know how it's gonna go. So wait, wait, wait. <laughs> That's all we could say. Are they trying to... Now, maybe I'm... Maybe I'm just off base here. But they could always retcon it to say that Wanda and Pietro were adopted, those weren't their real parents, and they're actually Magneto's kids. They could do that, and that Something would be, like that. that'd be believable, but also just kind of like... Who okay. knows, really? Maybe this is where they just merge the Fox universes, and it's like the multiverse is so messed up that now the X-Men universe is in the main MCU timeline, which would be amazing... Oh, this would never happen. I would love to see Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool, in the Multiverse of Madness. They would never do it because he would have to be, Deadpool would have to be toned down or the movie would have to get an R rating for Ryan Reynolds to be in this movie. I don't know. He doesn't need to be in it. I've heard this joke before, though. Is what, what you would do is you could have Deadpool in there for that one cameo. He'd show up. Probably look to the camera and say something like, like, oh, wow, you didn't expect to see me in a PG-13 movie, did you? Well, this is all I could do here without, you know, bumping this up to an R for the studio execs, so I'm out. See ya in Deadpool 3. <laughs> That'd be great. That would be his cameo, if anything. That's all you can do. That's really all you could do. I would love that. I would love if that happened. I'm excited to see how it, how it goes, and... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I'm stressed. The movie's making me stressed. 
just the more for I'm the... talking about it, the more the more anxious I'm getting. I was how dare you? I was excited for this movie, and now I'm anxious to watch it. What have you done to me, Joe? Uh, look what you've done to me. Don't you blame me? Riling each other up. <laughs> look what the Batman movie's done for me. <laughs> We're so excited to talk about the Batman, we came into this Marvel discussion negative today. <laughs> like, I guess we have to talk about Marvel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was, that was what we had planned, and then we saw the Batman, and we oh. spent like 15 minutes just before this talking about the Batman. And then we felt annoyed we had to talk about Marvel. But anyway, oh well. I'm excited. That's all I gotta say. I'm looking forward to it. See what they do. You know, hope, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what I was thinking about before, what you were saying is merging them in the timelines. If we're talking about DC again, I just want to go back to add to my complaint earlier about multiverses getting too confusing. In 1985, DC did a little book called Crisis on Infinite Earths. Oh, God. Where the entire point was to converge the multiverse because it got too confusing. And they brought it back... Yeah, but even in 1985, they knew it was too confusing. Just saying. And they're gonna go down the same road. Okay. But we're excited. We're excited. This, this is it. This, use this as the thumbnail. Just. I don't know. We'll find out. We, honestly, we won't know till the second trailer, to be honest. I'm not gonna watch it. I probably won't either. <laughs> I don't want to know anymore. Yeah. I'm anti-trailer nowadays because trailers spoil everything. I'm anti-trailers ever since that Thor Ragnarok trailer. And the Batman v Superman trailer. Batman v Superman was the one that did it for me. I can't remember Ragnarok's. Ragnarok, it basically just showed him... There's some people complain that they showed Hulk in the trailer, but, like, you had to know he was in it. Yeah. But it was him basically going into the final battle where he jumps onto the rainbow bridge and he's like full powered. The immigrant song with the yeah, lightning. Yeah, like that part was like, that took away that moment for me when I watched it in the movie, but. Fair enough. Now that Batman v Superman one was they just, they showed everything. They showed Wonder Woman, Doomsday. Fucking Doomsday. I can't believe they did it. That's the one thing I will not allow in Batman v Superman is Doomsday is from Lex Luthor and a dead Zod. That's Nuclear Man from Superman 4! I never thought about that way. No! You just totally recontextualized. Doomsday is supposed to be a fucking alien from light years away that's made from a bunch of dead thousands of babies that is indestructible. He is not from a sliced hand from Jesse Eisenberg and a dead Zod. General Zod, Zod. yep. No, Zack Snyder. No. Bad. Bad. Everything else was okay. <laughs> Especially the ultimate cut. I don't know if you've seen the ultimate cut. That's the one I watched recently. It was pretty good. It was, it's better. Listen, I've been negative about Marvel all day. I had to say something negative about DC just to please the Marvel people out there. And the first Suicide Squad was bad, but I still hope for the air cut. Oh, gosh. We'll see. I don't know if it'll fix that movie, but... Nope. I heard that movie was edited by a trailer editing company. Oh, God. And I don't think David Ayer really had any. Honestly, the first 20 minutes, I could see that being edited by a trailer company. That's why the trailers were so great, but the movie wasn't great, because they... I don't think they knew what they were doing for a feature length, but that's just what I've heard in the past. That David Ayer didn't really get a say on how it was edited together, and a lot was left on the cutting room floor. Poor David Ayer. The story is what it is. You're not gonna change it fundamentally. And there goes my, there goes my camera. <laughs> okay, let's wrap her up. <laughs> oh, man. I, we went way longer than I thought we were going to. How long have we gone? My, my clock's busted. Hour and a half. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, let's just wrap up. To defend ourselves real quick. We're excited, but we're cautious. Because you have to be. Because it's the multiverse. And the problem with that anything can happen is that anything can happen. And that's going to bring back Robert Downey Jr. Thing. and undermine all death. They're going to somehow merge with DC and make Nicolas Cage Superman. They might do it. Who knows? Superman Lives was 
Yeah, they're gonna make that finally. Ugh, anyway. Actually, wait. Didn't Nicolas Cage play Superman in that Teen Titans Go movie? He might have. He might have. I think they brought him in for that, just for... I didn't watch that. I hate Teen Titans Go. Don't get me started. Never seen it? Don't plan to see it? Don't. Don't do it. I'll stick with the original, thank you. Original's so good. All right, let's, uh, let's wrap up. So, uh, plug your social. Right, well, I am Ryan Walker Official on TikTok and Instagram. That's basically where you'll find me. Okay, you can find me at ThoughtPlay Media on Instagram. Not that I post very often, but whatever. Also, you can find further film discussion and entertainment reviews on thoughtplane.ca slash articles. And if you'd be so kind, you can support ThoughtPlay Media on Patreon, link below, and YouTube. Also, be sure to leave us comments and reviews as that's a big help. And how about clicking that like button if you enjoyed this? We hope to see you on the next close-up with Ryan and Joe. Till next time. Bye!